Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, now what time is it? I don't want to be late tonight Would again. Would you look who's worrying about being no late? No remarks. Just tell me the time, please. It's 8 o'clock. And the concert doesn't start until quarter of nine. Good, then we'll have time. Well, I'll just start night. putting the lights out in here. There's no use leaving the living room looking as if it were home. I mean, as if we were home, is there? No, not at all. I said, is there? David, can't you answer me? I can't. My jaw has dropped. Well, that's a fine thing for it to do just before going out. To think that you are ready for an appointment with time to spare. Now, now I have seen everything. Well, listen, just see if Fritz and Bertha are ready to, and no back talk, please. And no back talk, Go on. Please. I give you one compliment and no back talk, you please. You can't stand it that I'm ready on time, can you? No, I just can't stand it. Well, neither can I. Neither can I. David, I, I, I hope... What do you hope? I hope nobody will embarrass Fritz and Bertha at the concert. Do you think? I mean, because they know she's our cook and he's our farmer. I certainly hate Fritz and Bertha to be hurt. Of course you would, but stop worrying. They can take care of themselves. Yeah, I guess so. Do you know, Mr. Norton, you are about the only man I have ever known who doesn't look like a head waiter when he's dressed up? Mm, well, what do I look like? Oh, head usher, maybe. Oh, careful. You'll turn my head. Mm. As a matter of fact, you look pretty all right, too. Is that all I look? Pretty mm. all right? No, you look all right to me. Well, how would I look to a stranger? Stranger? I hate you sometimes. Honestly. Listen, maybe I should have gone to the hairdresser or something, do you think? Mm, My hair is kind cluck. of queer, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, it certainly does. Now, what have I done? Ouch! David, you're crushing my dress. No. How do you think that I think you look? Well, I still don't know how I look, but the way you kissed me, I certainly feel wonderful. Then put on your coat. I'll call Bertha and Fritz. You're so businesslike all of a sudden. That's me. Bertha, you almost ready? Don't want to be late. I'm coming, Mr. Norton. I just wanted to make sure my stove was out and, and turn the icebox down a little. Well, I what about by. Fritz? Oh, he went to the barn to get the car. He said he meets you out in front. Oh, that's fine. Are they ready, David? Well, Bertha's just finishing putting her stuff away in the kitchen and oh, puttering the around. The never leaves a fleck of dust unturned, does she? How about Fritz? No, he's up at the barn getting the car. He'll meet us out front. Oh, what a couple. No matter what happens, I'm glad we asked him to come with us tonight. David, hmm? you ever heard Bertha sing? I live here, too, remember? Oh, that's right. I mean, I, I wondered... If I'd survived what she has, I wonder if I'd be able to sing, too. No, I dare say you could. Oh, I don't know. It must be the hardest thing in life to see your whole world crumble, start at the bottom of the ladder again, and make no excuses for it. I see no excuses to take courage and character. Oh, what a stupid world. We never, never talk about it. Yeah, I'll help you on with your coat. Oh, thanks, darling. Fritz hardly ever talks about himself either, does he? No, it's none of our business. I know it's none of our business. What do you take me for? A nosy little female, but sweet. Oh, David, what if the world should crumble again? This time we were the ones. Well, we mustn't let it. Now I'm all ready. Everything in, is in the kitchen ship and shape, as you say. Ship and shape, good. Yeah, I, I do, uh, I hope I do not keep you waiting. Oh, no, not a bit, we're all ready. Mrs. Norton, you are like a picture at your, in your evening dress. Aha, uh-huh, David, somebody appreciates me. Well, Bertha's being polite. I see. I hope I do not disgrace you without an evening dress. You look perfect. Well, it's just my black dress, but it does. It must, <laughs> so it does. And very well, too. David, we're all ready, come on. After you, Bertha. After you, Claudia. Go on, go on, go on, Bertha. You heard the boss. Oh, when he's this way, bossy, I never feel he's the boss. Mm, I see what you mean. Here, I'll lock the door. Uh, here I am, Mr. Norton. Oh, good. In the car. The motor is running. Oh, good, good. Thanks for taking her out of the garage, Fritz. Not at all. Fritz is a little too big for his dark suit now. 
I was just <laughs> thinking, he looks very handsome. Yeah. <laughs> he bought it when he was still superintendent in New York. Oh. Now he's stronger than he was. More muscle, you know. It builds a man up to uh, do outside work, so Fritz is too big for his suit. But I'm very happy about it. So are we. Uh, would you like me to drive, Mr. Norton? No, not at all. You and Bertha get in the back. I'll drive. He always has to run everything, you know. All husbands do. <laughs> you talk too much, Mama. Get in the car. Oh, Fritz, I'm old enough to know what I do. You don't have to tell me everything. As you said, all husbands do, Bertha. <laughs> All right, we uh, all set? All set. Let's go. <laughs> Berta, do you re- realize what we are doing tonight? No. Pinch me, Fritz. Pinch me. <laughs> but I realize we have to hear music. All right, we're off to the concert. Let's go. Bobby's certainly crowded, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what a very dressed-up business this is, Mrs. Norton. Yes, I had no idea it'd be so fancy, Bertha. I guess everybody likes to show off once in a while. Look, there is Jari Tucker over there. Oh, See? Yeah. See in the corner. His huh? Sunday suit on, what do you know? Yeah. All his teeth, too. David, you see... Where's David? Where'd he go? Oh, he and Fritz are looking at the photos and paintings on the wall. Oh, yes, I see them now. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Norton is handsome. How do you know what I was thinking? You had it in your eyes. It is too bad Mrs. Brown could not be with us here. Oh, well, Mama wouldn't have cared, cared much about it. You know, she's funny about crowds. As a matter of fact, I think I'm a little funny about them, too. You must not be when you are young. You must go out much. Home's too nice. Well, darling, hasn't everybody turned out in great style? Frankly, I never suspected Eastbrook had so many evening clothes in its closet. I smell mothball. Hush up. You. Berta, there is a picture there on the wall you would like very much to see. What is it of, Fritz? Come and you will see. Tell me first before I come. Like a woman. It is a picture by an American soldier of Bodensee. We were there uh, once, remember, on our marriage. Yes, I remember. Now I prefer to see Texas. <laughs> but come, show me, Fritz. Take my hand. I don't want to lose you in the crowd. You have not lost me yet, <laughs> You will have not no such luck. How you talk, just like an American woman. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Mr. Norton? I wouldn't be surprised, Mrs. Norton. I like two children the night before Christmas. The children with sadness in their eyes. Oh, there you are. I thought I saw you come in the door, and here you are. Oh, hello, Mrs. Reed. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We haven't seen you since summer, Mrs. Reed. Well, winter, you know, I moved back to town. Oh, yes. bare winter up here. It's so bleak and dull. <laughs> but this being the big local social event, I thought I'd drive up and see some of my friends. Charming, isn't it? Yes, charming. So quaint. So many dear people here tonight. Of course, I don't know everybody, but the nice people are here tonight, too. Have you said hello to Nancy No, Little? no, I, I haven't seen her. Right over there in the corner. Oh, yes, with all the orange hair. We have to say hello to her, David. We do. Why? David. You know, I've gotten very good. I know quite a lot of the local citizenry now. How nice. So amusing. Such a new outlook. Tell me, my dear, was that your mother who came in with you? My mother? Yes, that handsome woman with whom I saw you coming into the lobby. Oh. Oh, no, no. That, that's not my mother, Mrs. Reed. She's a very good friend. Oh, what a shame. Oh, my dear, I, I meant I know your mother must be handsome, too, but I like this woman's face and her carriage, something quite aristocratic and dignified about her. Well, she is a rather special person. New to Eastbrook. Yes, quite. Good for us. Very. There she is. And that man, her husband? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, a very striking-looking man. There aren't many people like that left in the world, are there, my dear? No, there certainly aren't. And especially in Eastbrook. I'm afraid I'm not all that poor with country people, are you? Quite. (laughs) You'll introduce me, won't you? Why, I... I... We'd be very happy to, Mrs. Reed. Oh, there's Nancy Riddle now. Oh, dear, what a dreadful lavender dress she's wearing. And with her orange hair. Still, I must talk to her. Will I be seeing you in the intermission, my dear? Why, yes, yes, probably. Good, I'll be looking forward to it. Bye-bye. She won't see us if I see her first. Fool that woman is, what a complete 
Utter sap. You were standing there, sweet as a lollipop, nodding and smiling. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, something should be done about people like that. You're the man to do it, only you don't. Well, at least I didn't make polite small talk with I you. I know. I could have kicked you letting me carry the brunt alone. Well, that's what wives are for. And I'm glad at last you found a purpose for us, darling. <laughs> now what are you smiling at? The joke is on Mrs. Reed. You mean about Fritz and Bertha? <laughs> well, she sees him at our house, Fritz in his white coat, and if he if she goes into the kitchen, Bertha with her head in the oven. <laughs> well, certainly serve her right. I'd love to see her face. So quaint. Well, cheer up. You never will. She'll never cross my threshold. It'd almost be worth it. If I were sure it wouldn't embarrass Fritz and Bertha. Mm, it would take a, take a great, great deal more than Mrs. Reed to embarrass Fritz and Bertha. It certainly would. Oh, why do I waste my breath on her? Only I wish I'd told her off. You are really bitter, aren't you? You bet I am, and I intend to stay bitter. Well, maybe you shouldn't be, David. Maybe the fact that Mrs. Reed saw Fritz and Bertha here and never thought of them as anything less than what they look to be and what they are, maybe that's a good sign. No, because if she knew, she could change her mind very quickly. Hmm. As you said, there's still some people who wouldn't accept them as, as a man that's just what he is. And not the labor that he does. The snobbish fool. Now, David, darling, don't get so angry in the middle of the lobby. Why not? It makes my blood boil. In a democracy, a man is supposed to be taken for what he is without social ladders and scales and barriers. We'll and... get there someday, I hope. David, look, look at Fritz and Bertha now. Say, that's, uh, that's George Reynolds he's talking isn't to. Isn't that isn't Mrs. It? Reynolds talking to Bertha? Probably comparing recipes. <laughs> Fritz has probably given Reynolds some hot tips on farming. George Reynolds is the the first select man, isn't he? So? So, David, isn't that your democracy? Looks to me as if it was pretty healthy. When you're home alone for lunch, do you snatch a hasty icebox snack? Nutritionists insist you're the better for a quiet, relaxed, sit-down meal. You can make that meal refreshing as well by the addition of a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola. Get a carton of Coke when you're out today, and lunch refresh tomorrow. Hey, hey, David, Claudia. David, it's Joe King. Well, let's see what he wants. Uh, first time I've caught you two together. Mind if I talk to you? Well, you know, we're very expensive. We charge by the minute. Well, good, I'll buy it, because Monday is St. Valentine's Day, and I want to find out something very important. Uh-oh. Joe, I, I, I really don't think we're very good authorities on Valentines. You know, I have not sent one single Valentine since I was in grade school. Me either. Well, you're good authorities on love, and that's enough for me. Tell me, what makes your marriage tick? Well, what did you say? that's a big order. I mean, I've been watching you two for a year and a half now. What's the secret of your having such a good time out of life? A lot of things. Name one. Love. Name another. Well, respect. Do you mean you respect me, David? Now, you keep out of this. You know, he, he hates to give me a compliment, that man. <laughs> All right. I think I'm beginning to get your secret, though. Two hearts that beat as one. Just one big walking valentine. Now, hasn't he got a nerve? Hasn't he, though? Now, go along with you. Sorry I interrupted you. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>